This will be the only video anyone will ever have to watch to understand why silver is so explosive. I'm going to be showing several different articles, several different pieces of evidence, proof that silver isn't just probably explosive, but it is. It's not a what if, but a when. It's not a maybe, but it's a must. And when we're looking at these several different articles, you can't debate this stuff. Numbers don't lie. Facts don't lie. I'm going to be proving a lot of stuff talking about um, the above ground amount of silver versus the below ground amount of silver. I mean, the U.S. Mint literally admitting there's a silver shortage. But look, that's not the only thing that silver has going for it, right? Yes, low supply, high demand shoots the price up. Silver's scarce. But it also has to do a lot about the dollar, the dollar's strength and other things as well. This is going to be a very lengthy video, but that's because that's how many things silver has going for it. We're not just talking about higher silver prices. We're talking about astronomically higher silver prices. We have some people predicting a hundred plus dollar silver. We have some people predicting several thousand dollars silver. Now, regardless, there's one point to be made. Silver will go higher. It's not an if, but it's a when. With that said, let's jump into this video. Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer and welcome to my daily 10 p.m. video. Thank you for tuning in. Now look, we are a day or two away for my 47,000 subscriber silver giveaway. You don't want to miss it, so click subscribe, but also click the bell or you might not get notified when the entry video gets posted. So whether it's price manipulation, the demand exceeding the supply, inflation, or rather hyperinflation, silver's role in this new digital age being the most highly conductive metal for thermal conductivity, electricity, and even light sensitivity, its affordable role as a safe haven in times of economic uncertainty, former mint directors admitting there's a shortage, having to cut back mintage numbers of coins, Perth Mint announcing 81% sales increase, silver being the number one performing asset in 2020, beating Bitcoin, Tesla stocks, and etc. I mean, even more. And then the COMEX rejecting physical delivery of physical silver and many, many other situations. I think it's safe to say there's a good reason why my name is Silver Slayer and not Gold Guy, not Bitcoin Boy, or even Stock Slayer. You know, that, that stuff you can't make up, folks. You can't make that stuff up. We have a lot of different articles we're going to be covering, talking about how much silver is in the world, the below ground supply versus the above ground supply, but also looking at the dollar's growth, I mean, what's happening with interest rates, how this is going to affect precious metals prices, because most of you probably know there's a direct correlation, or I guess a negative correlation to the dollar index versus silver. So if the dollar's weaker, if the dollar index drops, silver and gold go up. And then we have proof that the silver, you know, silver is guaranteed to go up as time goes on and as the dollar is just burning away. I mean, you, you, you can't look at this type of stuff and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, maybe precious metals isn't it, it's it's OK or no. I mean, if you have anything invested or, or pegged to U.S. dollars, it's like switching seats in the Titanic. Do you think stocks are still going to stand and be strong while the dollar collapses? Bitcoin and precious metals is the only thing, the only way to completely take control of your wealth. Anything else is basically third party owned. You, you can't, you cannot debate that type of stuff, folks. But anyways, let's jump into this first article. So U.S. MITs. There's a global silver shortage, yet the price is still 220% from its inflation-adjusted all-time record high of $160. Probably nothing, right? I mean, that's probably nothing. So does the admission even matter? And what if inflation is and has been for decades severely understated? Now, there is one thing I want to mention just by this itself. Just by this itself. A lot of people would say, well, silver should technically be $5,000. And, you know, I actually read an article. I, I could have showed it in this video, but um, the guy was talking about why silver should technically be $5,000. And he's saying this. He's not saying silver will be that much, but he's saying it should be that much if 
everything were were as planned or if we were looking at inflation adjusted pricing and he uses the 250 to 1 ratio looking at every you know i i forget exactly what that what the ratio was but he was talking about why it literally should be five thousand dollars you know what i'm going to pause this video right here and show that ratio right now so here is the case for five thousand dollars silver now he's not saying He's not saying that the price will reach $5,000 an ounce. He's saying the actual physical silver spot price is not only extremely undervalued, but it's an illusion compared to the real value of an ounce of silver since it's totally disconnected from reality. And then he explains, he's talking about the physical market versus the paper market. And then he goes into this 250 to one leverage. So this is, and there's some important things right here as well. The market's equal to $5 trillion. And then silver trading around $20 currently, that represents $20 billion market for physical silver. So the physical silver, market is 20 billion dollars nowadays spot price is a lot higher so these numbers would be a little more exaggerated actually so here's the 250 to 1 ratio so the above discrepancy all this stuff makes for a 250 to 1 ratio between the paper market and the physical market meaning that for every one ounce of physical silver there are 250 ounces of paper silver circulating in several financial products in other words only one contract or certificate issued out of 250 can be convertible into physical silver. That is, the silver market is being leveraged 250 to 1. And, and that means, and yes, every ounce of silver you have in your safe, essentially 250 other people theoretically own that ounce as well. Now, let's look at this. So, if now, as the regulation agencies are claiming, the goal is to create new fixing for silver that would better reflect the physical market, notably from pressure, uh, pressure coming from countries like China, wishing to have stay in fixing precious metals prices. The leverage between paper and physical silver at risk is radically evolving. Let's hypothesize and see what silver price would be directly on physical market. So today, the actual silver market, according to Bloomberg, is $5 trillion. $5 trillion divided by $20 billion, which is the physical market, is 250 So 250 times 20 is $5,000 an ounce. So here's the conclusion. Every investor holding silver in the form of financial products without the possibility of verifying the physical existence should ask the question, uh, what will happen when more holders of said products will ask for physical delivery. And I already covered a video a couple days ago uh, talking about how someone got rejected, denied physical delivery on the COMEX when they tried to turn their contract in. So we can already start to see some of this happening. That was just one example of many that are going to be in this video. Make sure you like this video, share this video. People need to know this stuff. This is the meat and potatoes. If anyone wants to know why we invest in the silver, show them this video itself and it will cover essentially everything. Yes, I'm probably going to leave out a couple of, you know, lesser points, but I'm going to be talking about the meat and potatoes. Now, a lot of people are talking about a certain U.S. Mint Facebook post went out regarding silver delays or whatnot. So, yes, you know, in 2020, U.S. Mint ran out of American Eagles, right? Admitted it happened. They had to make an emergency 1 million minted supply from the San Francisco Mint at the end of the year. Then this year, right? And by the way, when they're putting out these mintage numbers, usually it's 40 million per year. Eagle, you know, silver eagles are put out. Recently, since 2019, it's around 13 million. So if they ran out of even 13 million, you can see how the supply is becoming smaller. They know demand is, is lessening. But that's nothing. So 13 million, okay, whatever. But if they couldn't even, if, if they had a shortage and they admitted that they are having a, a hard time finding silver to make these blanks, to make the coins, and the mintage numbers are only in the 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 teens the, the you know 13 14 million and they're still having a hard time finding silver that that explains a lot it shows for itself it speaks for itself especially when you have mexican mint australian mint uh, you, ha you have all these other mints as well also talking about admitting acknowledging that there's not much silver to go around so let's let's look at let's let's look at something right here as well so the United States Mint 
is committed to providing the best possible online experience to its customers. The global silver shortage has driven demand for many of our bullion and numismatic products to record heights. This level of demand is felt most acutely by the mint during the initial product release of numismatic items, right? This is the pre-order of the 2021 Morgan Carson City Privy, uh, New Orleans, yada, yada, yada. So, in the interest of properly rectifying the situation, the Mint is postponing the pre-order windows for the remaining 2021 Morgans. And, and he's basically saying, you know, you get an idea of the shortage with these numismatic coins. But it does translate over into bullion as well. We can't deny this. Why do you think that when the Type 2 Eagles came out, which is the first time they have ever changed the design of Eagles, a month before they announced there's a silver shortage. So type 2 eagles, yes, are going to have a lower mintage number. That's not it though. There's way more to this. There's way, way more to this. So, good grief, that's weird. And they're talking about how the U.S. Mint experience that our customers deserve. You know, they're trying to deliver the utmost positive so we will announce the revised pre-order launch dates as soon as possible. And that's a little weird. So usually the reality is such that price goes up. But then again, I would have to know something about supply and demand to understand that. And since I'm an idiot, I'd never be able to acquire such profound knowledge. Nonetheless, that's sort of like an admission, isn't it? In any case, every single person and every single entity are going to need to set up their game because there's a lot of explaining, admitting to do. For silver is one single thing on the entire planet that has unrelenting, overwhelming demand amid so very little precious supply, and yet silver's current U.S. dollar price, according to the Fed, so taken at face value, pun intended or not, is still 220% more away from all-time record highs on adjusted inflation basis. And we're going to be there soon because it's kind of sort of really hard to, you know, adjust something that is the same as it ever was, right? One ounce of silver is always going to be one ounce of silver, right? So what is a single Satoshi again, other than digital liability? But I digress. Silver is the one thing that both American deep state and the globalists as well as cartel fear more than anything else in the entire world. And I mean, that's true. Silver is a direct threat to the U.S. dollar. It's also why you're not going to see banks coming out and telling you to buy silver. They want you in things that are pegged to the dollar because when, you are, when you're in debt, you're a slave to the U.S. dollar. It's a, it's a scare tactic. Do you really think the, the government wants you taking complete control of your wealth? No, right? Back on track, though. The U.S. Mint is acknowledging a global silver shortage. So what's the big deal, right? Well, yes and no. Big deal because on one hand, the U.S. Mint's admission provides further vindication for all of us who have been talking about silver shortages for years. But on the other hand, there's this pesky little thing called the, I can't say that really, which is an entire army of mainstream media propagandists and also a bigger pesky little thing called beasts. And, and, and any, you know, it's just, I don't want to go too deep into all of his, you know, stuff. But regardless, regardless, this stuff is coming out more and more. And do you think they would ever have announced this a couple of years ago? Look what happened in 1980 with the Hunt brothers. There was a, such a low supply that on one October month, one uh, one month of the Comex, that's how much. So let's, I think the supply was like 120,000 ounces of silver, which would cover one one month of the Comex on October. And the Hunt brothers, since they've bought billions of ounces or billions of dollars into silver, there wasn't much left. So you know what the U.S. government did? They banned the act of buying silver. And yes, you heard me correctly. They literally banned buying silver. You could not buy silver. You and I couldn't buy silver. You know what we could only do? Sell it. And you know who we could sell it to? Not other silver stackers. They literally banned it. I made an entire video covering that. And guess what? When they banned silver, guess what the price was? $50. When silver was at the all-time highest price it ever was, the government banned silver, which directly crashed the price all the way back down in 1980. It's called Silver Thursday, or it's called, um, you know, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's called Silver Thursday. Yeah, it is. And, and that's the day that silver was devalued again and didn't do anything until from 2008 to 2011 when it hit basically $50 again.
But the point is that the government steps in at perfect times. And that was devastating to the Hunt brothers because they did corner the market, essentially. They pushed it up to $50, but the government actually made, uh, they, got, they got in a lot of trouble for that as well. But anyways, let's, let's, let's keep going on. How much silver is there in the world? So the most reliable industry estimates seem to agree that there are around 3 billion ounces of silver in circulation around the world. And that's, that's something you have, to, you have to look very closely at because most silver that gets dug up is thrown away. So there's 3 billion ounces circulating, but most of that silver that's used in technology and laptops and cell phones is going to get thrown away, not rescrapped like gold is. All gold is rescrapped and recycled because it's profitable to do so. And most gold is used for jewelry. So yes, they're going to sell their jewelry, their earrings, and then it gets melted down again. But silver, nobody's scrapping silver out of these laptops and all that. So anyways, let's look into this. Putting the global silver supply into perspective. Recall 3 billion ounces of silver cited earlier. This, however, does not account for silver coins, bars, and other items in private settings. But that figure of 3 billion ounces does include all the known hoards, government vaults, exchange funds, and industrial stockpiles. With a global population of approximately 7.8 billion as far as 2019, that's about 0.38 ounces of silver per person. And that's is found that that's nearly as much in a pre-1965 90% half dollar. Now think about the scale of billions of ounces of silver that's known and available for potential use. That's perhaps more silver than you could wrap your head around. In any case, the three billion or so ounces of silver known and accounted for in the whole world could fit into a cube about 180 feet square. In simpler terms, that equates to a high-rise office building of 18 stories tall. Considering that's all the silver in the world, that really isn't all that much now, is it? Now, how rare is silver, right? Let's, let's think about the fact that those 3 billion ounces of silver could fit within a modestly high office building. It doesn't appear that silver is exceedingly common after all. In fact, in the context of all needs and uses for silver around the world, it seems like silver might be rather rare. It, it, it's definitely rare, even more rare than gold, if you really think about it. Most gold is dug up. The, the, 95% of gold that gets dug up out of the ground is going to stay in circulation, just, you know, keep getting melted down and reused. Not the same for silver. So if the gold to silver ratio is 8 to 1, it's actually a lot smaller when you think about the reality of it. Certainly, silver is a precious metal and relatively scarce as compared to many other metals, such as aluminum, copper, lead, but compared to, say, gold, how rare is silver? There is perhaps less 3-9 spine silver available than there is 3-9 spine gold in the world. Hmm, what was I just saying? It's true that gold has significant industrial, monetary, and artistic uses. Still, the world uses a much higher percentage of its silver supplies on an annual basis than it does gold. Interestingly, silver is mined at a much higher rate than gold, about 8 parts to 1, right? The gold to silver ratio is 8 to 1. 8 to 1. Now, back in historical days, the gold to silver ratio you know, how much silver is compared to gold, was two and a half to one. Two and a half parts silver equals one part gold. Back in Egyptian days, biblical days, silver was as valuable than gold. It's sometimes more valuable. And they thought silver was magical because it could purify water, right? If you drop a coin, a silver coin in water, it purifies it. You drop a coin in, in a gallon of milk, it keeps the, mo the, the milk fresh for longer. Yes, current market valuations show gold to be disproportionately more expensive than silver, as the mining ratio suggests. As of early 2020, silver trades were around $18 an ounce, while the market rate for gold is closer to 1500 That equates to gold being approximately 85 times more valuable. So it perhaps is no surprise that with such a difference in their value, the general regard and desire for gold is much higher than it is for silver. So it, now it goes in how much silver is mined, right? We're talking about around 900 million ounces, and that's about what the COMEX is as well. You know, around a billion ounces. I think that's what it hit this year, but... Regardless, the, the demand will not be able to keep up with the supply, especially mining supply. Most silver is dug up by accident. It's a byproduct metal, which means by accident. They're looking for gold, lead, or zinc like they were talking about. If they find some silver, they'll take it, but they're not looking for it. So now we're going to look a little bit into the dollar strength, right? I mean, the, this, the situation, I'm not going to say the word, but you all know what it is. Um, this has exposed the United States to how broke we really are, right? We are 20, 
28 trillion dollars in debt and this number is never going to go in the green it never will we are too deep in the hole there's no solutions there's only alternative and the only alternative is precious metals here is let's look at the paper to gold ratios 85 to 1 paper to silver ratio is 188 to 1 here's the dollar to gold ratio is twenty thousand dollars per ounce dollar to silver ratio is two thousand eight hundred and forty one dollars an ounce and here's the dollar to silver ratio in 1913 which is two dollars and sixty four cents so this is inflation adjusted this does not mean the two silver is two thousand eight hundred and forty one dollars but i mean if we're looking at the reality it is now right now uh, what the dollar's lost 98 percent of its purchasing power 98%. It's not 99%. It's not 97%. 98% is a literal factual number. You can fact check me on anything I've said throughout this video. 98%. 44% in the last 20 years. It's getting worse a lot faster at an alarming rate. It will collapse someday. It cannot go on forever. Every fiat based system throughout existence has collapsed. Every single one. Gold and silver valuable for 5,000 years, but every fiat-based system collapses. Look at Zimbabwe. You have the trillion-dollar bill. People, third-world countries carry their money in trash bags because their dollar's so deflated. You have to carry around hundreds of bills because it's like a it's like a $1 bill having the purchasing power of like, you know, five cents. So to buy something at the store that's five dollars, you have to hand over hundreds of dollars. So anyways, um, you know, the dollar continues its weakening trend against the yen in the first two months of the year. And this is talking about um, the, the Chinese yen compared to the U.S. dollar. And that, that could be interesting. That, that could be an interesting situation as well. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into this because that's a whole separate video within itself. But it does, it does show a lot. I mean, we're talking about quantitative easing, which is widely deemed as an unbalanced approach. And that's the government's excessive release of liquidity. Right. And, and we're just printing off more and more and more and more and more dollars. It's like trying to pay off a credit card with another credit card, right? We're trying to get ourselves out of debt by replacing it with more debt. That's never going to work. Then we have banks like JP Morgan spoofing, placing false buy orders on these exchanges, canceling the order before it goes through, right? They, they've been doing that with the silver market, silver ETFs for, for tens of years. Um, three of their employees got arrested for this. So yes, silver price is manipulated. But if you want to look at all of this, the the whole the whole point of this is it's all looking towards higher silver prices right think about this in 10 years by the year 2030 every single electric vehicle company every single electric vehicle company by the year 2030 is going to be or every single automobile company by the year 2030 is going to be an ev electric vehicle silver is heavily used in electric vehicles so the demand for silver and 5g towers silver lithium ion batteries electric vehicles and solar panels as the whole entire world is going green pv photovoltaics which is silver pv cells uh, the next 10 20 years and, and ever you know and, and beyond silver is going to be needed more and more and more and more and more but miners cannot keep up with that type of demand industrially or individually like you and i everyone's going to want and need a slice of the silver pie and there's just not enough for it low supply high demand shoots the price up so anyways if you thought this video was educational informational at least entertaining make sure to smash the like button i hope i covered um enough to make a pretty good argument that silver is a ticking time bomb waiting to explode and there is a reason why my name is silver slayer not bitcoin boy not gold guru not stock slayer not whatever else in the world you could think of there's a reason for that there's a reason why the silver community is so strong there's a reason why it's called wall street silver not wall street gold there's a reason for all of this so anyways i'm gonna wrap this video up here uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The link to these articles will be in the description. Remember, we are right around the corner. I'm talking about a day or two away from my 47,000 subscriber giveaway. You don't want to miss the entry video, so also click the bell. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.